The day started really well at first, until breakfast. I knew I had cooked his eggs too runny. By that, I mean the way I instructed chef number 5 in how to cook the eggs. I call him number 5 because I forget their names. Anyway, Johnny liked his eggs over easy with the yolk cooked but soft and only barely runny. But if I got it wrong, he would explode. This time we were sitting in our breakfast nook, him sharing about his deep hatred for puppies and children, me sharing about my love for kitties and orphans. What a wild imagination. The usual. As he cut open the yolk part of one of his eggs. I was watching him like a hawk. The many sharp-edged rings he always wore were glinting from morning sunlight coming in through the 40-meter-long ceiling-to-floor auto-darkening window. I had learned that anything can set him off. He seemed calm as he stood up and walked to my side of the table. It's a large table made of marble with inlaid platinum, so it took him a while to arrive at where I was sitting. Enough time for me to start and finish my meal. Yes, a long table. Nothing like the cardboard box we used for a dining table when I was a poor blind, ugly, retarded child. I remember the glint of the platinum inlay as my heart began to beat faster because I couldn't discern the expression on his face. He kept walking until he was behind me. He picked me up out of the chair by the neck with one hand using his cocaine-induced strength while punching me in the head with his other fist, screaming, you dirty whore. You know how I like my ex. Now I must break you. Then he throws me across the room. I bounce off the wall and land on the floor in a pain-racked heap. I remember looking at the floor as I rise to my ha hands and knees. For some reason I was focused on the whorls in the imported rare bokode wood. I could never even dream of affording that kind of thing when I was growing up a poor African Asian Eskimo child in Harlem. Johnny is there hovering over me. I stare in ha ha horror as he pulls his leg back and kicks me in the b -b belly to send me flying across the room and the bouncing off the wall to ceiling window looking out on our private helipad. He was screaming, I'm Jack Sparrow. You fuck with me, you fucking with the best, bubblehead. All I can see are his wild eyes and the white powder covering his upper lip. I feel a dribble of warm liquid coursing down my face. Later I discover it is blood. I can hear the stereo playing, Eye of the Tiger, which somehow gives me the strength to get up. There's a wine bottle next to me. It's that type Johnny and I often enjoy together. I have fond memories of those times sitting by the fire on the beach in Jamaica or my Orca or Johnny's Island. In a daze, I pick up the bottle, not even sure what I'll do with it. For some reason I notice the wall has brown handwritten letters in dried blood, scrawled on it. I recognize Johnny's handwriting. Johnny had written, all work and no play makes Johnny a dull boy. He's howling now as he stalks toward me, teeth bared, a look on his face as if he is hungry like a wolf. I plead, Johnny please, no, I love you. What we have here is is just a failure to communicate. With his cold dead eyes he looks at me and says, Frankly my dear, I don't give a damn. Must. Not. Laugh. I'm afraid for my life so I smash the wine the bottle on the ground between us. I scream, please stay away. Wine and glass shards go everywhere in slow motion, like in that gladiators and orgies show, Spartacus where those big sweaty masculine manly men thrust swords at each other repetitively. Johnny's still walking toward me with that chilling toothy grin. I put my hands up and cry out, Johnny please. We have the stuff that dreams are made of, and who knows what dreams may come. He goes calm suddenly and I'm flooded with relief as I think maybe I got through to him. Sadly, the mood was brief. It's like the booze and coke filled monster personality is rising again. He then said, darling, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. I run upstairs and barricade myself in servant number three's bathroom. I don't remember servants' names, so I use numbers so I can be considerate enough to not get their names wrong, like when I accidentally call Johnny, James Franco or Elon. Oh my god, did she really say that? Hands shaking, I hurriedly lock the door. I sink to the floor with my back to the door, sobbing. A few minutes pass in silence. Thinking maybe he has gone away, I stand up and reach for the door handle. I hear something outside the door like footsteps. In a quavering voice I say, is anybody out there? Suddenly there is a loud crack of splintering wood as the head of an axe makes a hole in the door. The steel axe head glints cruelly as flying splinters cut my face and arms. It's one of those doors you know, that goes from the ceiling to the floor. It's painted seafoam green and has a gold metal knob. The lock is you know, it's one of those twisty in the handle type locks, like most of us have grown up with. Anyway, he pulls the axe out and strikes again. I jump at the loud crack. Now there is a hole big enough for me to see his enraged features. He pauses to look me in the eye. I'll never forget the ominous tone of his voice as he says, Here's Johnny.
At that point my bladder let go and I peed myself. I could feel my cheeks turn red, and the warm liquid dribbling down my legs. I was paralyzed as Johnny reached through the hole and unlocked the door. Then all I could do was throw my hands up and scream as he slowly walked toward me. He smirked and asked, Why are you screaming? I haven't even cut you yet. Then I knew he was going to kill me and I'd do anything to stay alive. I wonder how many people see through this crazy bitch's terrible acting. So I did one of those things stunt people have done for me in the past. I'd seen it done enough times that I was pretty sure I could do it. I leaped up to wrap my legs around his neck and did that spinny thing bringing him down to the ground with me sitting on his chest. I punched his face as hard as those other times I mean much harder but he just laughed. He bucked his hips and I flew off over his head, smashing into the ceiling. I hit the floor hard but I guess adrenaline gave me the strength to haul myself up and run. I could hear him behind me, chasing. I think she has done one superhero film too many. We were just entering game room number 6, full of pool tables and stand-up video games from the old days. We had Defender, Tron, Joust, Moon Patrol, Miss Pac-Man, and my favorite, Centipede. Amber, darling, light of my life, I'm not gonna hurt you. I just want to talk, he said. I don't know why, but I believed him. So with hope in my heart, I stopped and turned to him, tears running down my face, sore, battered, smelling like pee, degraded, embarrassed, and yet hopeful. I hoped that together we could defeat the monster inside him. I am like that, hopeful and nurturing. He's smiling now. I think maybe he has come out of his rage. Maybe he has put the monster away. Maybe together we can keep it at bay. Then in a nearly calm voice he says, Show me the money. As he roughly rips my nightgown off. I'm standing there, totally naked. I remember how cold it felt, because I wax my vagina and every breeze felt like it feels when the wind blows up your skirt when you are not wearing undies. My exquisitely shaped nipples at the tips of pert and bouncy breasts were hardening from the chill. My heartbeat sped up. I felt terrified and alone. Then in a fake Cuban accent, Johnny says, Say hello to my little friend, as he pulls down his pants. His words strike me as ironic because his penis is transplanted from a dolphin. So it is prehensile and huge. This is clown world. This is because while I was shooting Aquaman with that dreamy hunk, I mean, a uh, Jason Momoa, never mind that. Anyway, Flipper and I really hit it off. They let me take him home for a few days. Johnny grew to envy the dolphin's penis. Not because anything happened between the dolphin and I. Those rumors, photos, and recordings are fakes and pure speculation. Just because Flipper's skin was so shiny, slick, and smooth and he had this sweet way he'd squeak and touch me, doesn't mean I had any kind of lasting, I mean any kind of fling with him. Anyway, Johnny had arranged for his friend Doc Holiday to come over and transplant Flipper's penis onto Johnny. On the positive side, apparently that dolphin had always identified as female, so yeah, I guess big win for him. Or her. Someone wake me from this crazy dream. Oh, and prehensile means it can bend all over the place as he wishes, somewhat like, but far better than, a high dollar dildo. You'd think that might be a lot of fun for a girl but Johnny didn't use it like Flip. I mean Johnny had a difficult time regulating the amount of pressure his dolphin penis exerted when inside my juicy vagina, which hurt, if we did it more than twice a day. This time, seeing his 36 inches of rock-hard glistening penis, combined with all the stress of the week, I freaked out and kicked him between the legs. I thought maybe that would have helped snap him out of it so I tried pleading again, please, my precious, snap out of it. We're not in Kansas anymore. Come back to me, Johnny. I know you are inside there. I love you. I looked into his eyes and saw, only madness. I knew then my life was in danger, so I turned to run but it was too late. He grabbed my hair, pulled me against him, and with my firm butt expressed against his hardening growing, whispered into my ear, Frankly my dear, I don't give a damn. Then he picked me up by the hair with one hand and carried me to the nearby pool table where he thrust me down onto the table like the manly masculine in macho chad he never is. All I could think of was his massive dolphin penis and how vulnerable I was in that position with my low hip to waist ratio, bubble ass. Beckoning has oh so filling there aisle pulsing engorged manhood. I was terrified and crying out, no, please, don't, stop. But I was surprised when he flipped me over to be sunny side up. I guess to create more fear so I could see him pull a gun out and ask me. Do you know what this is? I actually knew the gun model from when my father was running arms for US funded terrorists. I mean freedom fighters, in Syria. So I said, an 88 Magnum. 
He replied, Yes, Amber, and this gun shoots through schools. I don't know if it was the 10 bottles of tequila or pound of cocaine or 10 pills of ecstasy he had done before breakfast, but I was thinking he was crazy and my life was in danger. FYI, I never do drugs. All I could do was beg and plead. But then, while I was mentally preparing my last will and testament, he reversed the gun and put the barrel in his mouth, asking me, Is this what you want? Then you can be with James Franco, Judy, Janice, Jason Momoa, Elaine, Elon, helicopter pilot number three, Learjet pilot number two, bidet operator number four, and Flipper. Maybe you can have them all at once or take turns, or have them pick a number between one and nine. I knew in that moment, in my heart of hearts, when contemplating his death, that I loved this man and wanted to save him. I felt that I could save him and we could repair the relationship. So I tried a desperate gambit and said, Johnny, you can't respect yourself if you're afraid to be who you are. Be the change you want to see in the world. Somehow that got through to him. He shook his head like he was waking from a dream. Or like, you know, that shake that a puppy does to dry off after you just got done washing her. Have you ever done that? I used to sit in the moonlight and wash my puppy while singing songs of joy and peace. Then, a miracle happened. I would saw the glassy look leave Johnny's eyes, and a deep shame replaced it. He crumpled to the floor and started crying, his 36-inch penis now flaccid, snake-like, and motionless, curled up beside him. I dropped to the floor and held him, rocking him while stroking his hair. 